have you help me grab something? Yeah, sure. Do you mind? It's up on the top shelf up here. It happened it's to Amanda Boxdell 19 years ago. The 100%, yeah, up there, because I can't reach it. Um, yeah. A freak skiing accident on the Aspen slopes that paralyzed her from the waist down. In time, she adjusted, even to the point of skiing again. Go for a walk, come on. And visiting the mountain trails near her Aspen, Colorado home that she once hiked. But life ahead is no longer about being in a wheelchair. That's my favorite part. Her determination has a new focus. <laughs> Are you planning on dancing? Why not? It's my, one of my dreams to be able to slow dance. Mm -hmm. That dream starts with strapping on this device, the exoskeleton called e-legs. It's a really quick, quick process. 45 pounds of batteries, a computer, sensors in the braces and in the crutches. Okay, I'm ready. Okay, so am I. More on how it works in a moment, but first, watch this. Wow. You're, Ta -da! you're tall. <laughs> Look at you. Come you're give like, me a hug. There you Come are. On in. <laughs> and standing is just the first step. Boxtel is discovering what it's like to walk again. Uh, I just feel like it's cool to be part human and part robot. I mean, that's, I'm the cruelest girl in the world. Yeah, you think? I'm the bionic woman, come on. Does it feel heavy, does it feel light? Is there any kind of a sense, do you feel like you're wobbly or what's the physical sensation? I don't feel weight on me. Mm -hmm. I'm on my own two feet. Mm -hmm. I don't even feel the weight of the backpack because really? it's dispersed down into the ground and into mm -hmm. the feet. Mm -hmm. I just feel like I've got this nice encasing that's going to help me along my way and we walk together. E-Legs is the creation of Berkeley Bionics. John Fogelin is vice president of engineering. Well, this, this particular exoskeleton includes a number of sensors that participate in the decision mm -hmm. to instantiate a stride, to, mm -hmm. to take a take step. step. That's yeah. right, yeah. Part of that is in the crutches that we utilize. Mm -hmm. Those crutches have sensors within them to mm -hmm. determine their location and their angle and, and force that's being placed on them. We also have sensors within the feet of, of e-legs, and there's also sensors in each of the joints. Bionics has been around for quite a while in the movies, like this power loader from Aliens back in 1986. But much of the technology in Amanda's e-legs is based on this exoskeleton under development for the military. It allows a soldier to carry up to 200 pounds with the mechanical skeleton doing most of the heavy lifting. Where the ability of man stops currently, the ability of machines can pick up. Dr. Akshat Shah helped develop the e-legs, and his rehabilitation facility may be among the first to get working models when they become available early next year. While we keep looking for a cure, while we keep looking at stem cells and seeing where that process is going to lead by, we don't have to now wait 15 years while people sit idly by in their chairs. We can say in the meantime, we'll get you up, we'll get you walking, your bones will be strong, your muscles will be healed, and when that time, when that day comes, where we have a cure, you're ready. Push. Good. The new world of high-tech prosthetics includes this, the Tibion bionic limb that helps stroke victims relearn how to use their legs. That's it. I'm not even helping you. <laughs> it teaches a damaged brain that the leg it thinks is paralyzed can still move. And over repetition, that actually starts making you believe that, in fact, I can do this. Matt Murphy is vice president of engineering at Tibion Corporation. And the whole intent is that after you've had your rehabilitation with the bionic leg on your leg, you would then, after the session, go home and begin putting more weight on that leg, that you would actually have more confidence. It's like, okay, I'm going to try a little bit more. I'm going to be a little bit more daring with this leg. And over time, they actually get confidence back that, in fact, it's their leg is okay. They just have to use it more. Want to see more? Clinical trials are beginning for this retinal implant, hardwired into the brain 
that holds the promise of giving sight to the blind, enabling them to distinguish shapes, letters, items on a table, and maybe with practice, faces of loved ones. But the science of prosthetics is increasingly not just about improving the body as we know it, but bypassing our bodies all together and connecting our brains to computers. We're just listeners of brain waves. Dr. Anthony Rotaccio of Albany Medical Center in New York is developing a way to read what is in the minds of epilepsy patients. It's called synthetic telepathy. Language is just a motor task. You're making a plan to intend to use muscles of articulation, your lips, your palate, your tongue. And that plan can be decoded. And if we can predict what word you're planning to say, you can intend it without speaking it. And I think that's what we've been calling synthetic telepathy, the ability to communicate without formal language. In experiments, Dr. Rotaccio and his colleagues have implanted sensors onto the surface of the brain. The sensors pick up on the patient's thoughts, which are electronically transmitted through a computer Open it. to manipulate a 3D model of a hand or even play video games. Simply focus on the contact and you're ready to go. Researchers at Dartmouth College have already used similar technology to make calls with an iPhone by just thinking about it. If we can tune in to intention and we have the right software, then people can fly planes by intending to fly a plane. And this lies directly on the surface of the brain. Ritaccio's research connecting man to machine perhaps offers the greatest hope to people with spinal cord injuries. Because what we're saying is that the spinal cord is a conduit for intention. And if we just bypass that conduit and go right from brain intention to the muscles of articulation, or right from intention to a prosthetic device, or uh, right from intention to a computer, then you don't need a spinal cord. And that transforms humanity. I can determine the course of my own steps. Mm -hmm. All of which powers Amanda's drive to take that next step with her exoskeleton. Amanda calls herself a test pilot. And like any good test pilot, she sees not just what her e-legs can do now, but a very different future. What is it going to mean if a doctor no longer has to say, you'll never walk again? I don't want to ever hear those words again or to have a patient <coughs> hear, you will never walk again. There's no reason to. Technology is upon us in our era. Look forward to dancing, to hiking, because you can. It's possible. Anything's possible.